So I invite everyone for this short prayer. I just open here and uh, the last chapter of Dear God, whose goodness is infinite, dying to soften the bitter situation of all the spirits there are undergoing confusion and affliction. If it is your will, good spirits, in the name of Almighty God, we ask you to assist them in their afflictions. If in their best interests they cannot be spared them, that them cannot be spared them, how that go? I don't know. He or she cannot be spared them, enable them to understand that they are necessary for their advancement. Give them trust in God and in the future which will render them less bitter and give them also the strength not to give in to despair which would cause the loss of the benefit and which will render their future situation even more painful. Lead our thoughts to them so that it may uphold their courage. We invite the Good Spirit to invite us in this meeting and may the peace be within each one of our hearts. So be it. So be it. So be it. All right, thank you. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, thank you. For anybody on Facebook that's joining us, we're reading What is Spiritism? Um, a book by Alan Kardec, who most spiritists still haven't heard of. <laughs> Not Alan Kardec, I mean the, just this book, What is Spiritism? I just talked to somebody before the meeting um, who read all the books of the codification and never knew that this book existed. Mm. So I think we're doing a good work here. Good. <laughs> you know? um, and, and I hear that a lot from a lot of people. Like everybody knows about their main five Kardec books, but not uh -huh. a lot of people know what is spiritism. Mm -hmm. And I've been learning like a lot of things from reading this myself. Like it's just kind of stuff I've, I might have read before in other ways, but it's kind of like repackaged and, and put in another way. And it's kind of, it's really been helping me a lot. Um, so last week, I believe we talked about items three and four. Um, in, we're in chapter two, I'm sorry. Chapter two is called Elementary Notions of Spiritism. And uh, we talk about items three and four, about mm -hmm. patience and perseverance, um, about, uh, we're talking about disbelievers, and, <laughs> and like what we can do to convince disbelievers, or, or are we trying to convince disbelievers? Mm -hmm. um, so on to item five, um, I guess just to kind of get started, I'll read item five. Just to, um, Sorry, Steve, what page? I'm on 154 on this book. Frivolous meetings have grave consequences for beginners who attend them because they give them an erroneous idea of the character of spiritism. Those who attend only meetings of this sort will never be able to take seriously something they see treated frivolously by the very persons who claim to be its, its adherents. Prior study will teach them to judge the importance of what they see and to separate the good from the bad. Um, so that's item five. So I, I guess we're, we're, what they're talking about is if you go to a, a mediumship group and the people that are there are just like playing games or I don't know, if, I don't know if you can say the spirits are kind of being frivolous. I think they're really talking about the 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 people in the meeting if they're if they're being frivolous. Um, you know, that they're not taking the mediumship seriously or maybe doing something wrong or, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, that, and that, that will not really do anything to convince anybody. Um, and then we get back to the, the, like, he 
keep saying over and over in this book that prior study is like the most important thing. Prior study will teach us to separate the good from the bad. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when I read that, it kind of got me to thinking about, um, you know, maybe I talk about this every week, but before I came to Spiritism, the types of meetings that I would go to, which were outside Spiritism, which had to do with mediumship, mm -hmm. um, and then now that I'm here, and I started thinking about, like, as I started studying Spiritism, for me, it, like I had to sort of let some things go. Not, and nobody in the Spiritist movement told me I had to, but I started to like ask questions and go a little deeper. And I started to say, like, you know, some of the stuff that I that I've been doing is just not really, you know, I mean, it's like slowly but surely. Like I didn't let it all go at once, but slowly but surely, like I started letting a couple of things go that just. Um, just didn't really have much power for me anymore. Like mm -hmm. some of the some of the um, mediumistic groups outside of Spiritism. So mm -hmm. what I want to ask you guys is is because of your study of Spiritism. I don't know if you want to say a journey of Spiritism, but in, in your own personal journey, um, and when we judge the good from the bad, judge the importance of what we see, and we and we separate. Um, you know what 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 have you like? <laughs> Very Captain, important question. Yeah. I'll say, um, for me, I'll say this. This kind of reminded me of you. You kind of get what you, you get back what you put out. So if you're not serious, you're not going to get serious results. I, uh, I keep that which resonates with me, and that's how that's kind of what I gauge to be true or not is what resonates like in my soul. So things outside of spiritism that I, I hold sacred, I still hang on to. Um, Awareness is kind of a key for me, being aware of what I'm trying to get out of it, what I'm trying to learn, and having a, a reverence for the material. Um, that's what I see him say here a lot. It's, you know, you, ha you go into it with a sense of respect. You're not just looking for manifestations. You're not just looking for, because if that's what you're, you're looking to get out, that's, you know, that's, a, that's not really what it's about. So it's a false, uh, you know, kind of what spiritism is. Um, I've shed that which doesn't really serve me anymore, and I've kept that which does. I've kind of changed my thinking into just because I'm studying spiritism doesn't mean I have to get rid of this, this, or this. I'm finding where they actually kind of coincide. Because I study different religions, I study different philosophies, Buddhism, this and that. And there's a lot of common threads. It's just different, different ways of, of saying them. So I'm finding it very, um, very rewarding and enriching, taking that mindset into it. Instead of looking where, oh, this doesn't say this is different than this, so I just kind of like take what I need and leave the rest in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, I found like certain little things, like, you know, I, I went to Brazil and I brought back all these crystals, and, and it's, it, you get like this mixed response from people where I'm like, you know, some the crystals, they might do something, they might hold energy, but like the one that says, like, oh, keep this crystal under your pillow and you'll have shamanic dreams, like that. You know, for me, I'm like not really. It never really worked for me before, and it's still not really working for me. And now it's like I don't, I don't sleep with crystals under my pillow anymore. <laughs> you know, like, but um, like this, it's like funny little. It's funny to talk about it, but it's true. One of the things that's different for me is my attitude toward my dreams now. They seem uh, much more significant because the uh, the idea. That my, my understanding of spiritism at this point is that uh, these, this isn't just imagination. <laughs> you know, it, it, it has taken on a uh, another dimension. Mm. Yeah. I don't know how much it helps me, but it does. It really does help me psychologically. Yeah, mm. yeah I, do, I do the same thing because sometimes I know some of my dreams are just like crazy dreams, but some of them they might be. It might be like a, a message, or it might be something. You kind of take a second look at things because of it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of different for me because I've grown up in this environment, so mm. it's hard for me to say and to tell what I gave up from since I started because I've grown up with this belief that there is something else after, and we're going to come back. But something that I can share is that I think twice or maybe three times and at some point became natural in some situations what I do towards other people. So I don't, I, I try to be my best when I can. 
I try to help others and I, I, I go to the beach and I clean everything because I'm going to come back to the same planet. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to reincarnate here. I want to make this planet a better planet so when I come back, it's not going to be as bad. And, but what I do toward others, I don't, I don't hold resentments anymore. Uh, I'm dealing with the ones that I have now, but I don't want to take them with me for too long. So I, I, I started to pay attention more about dreams as well. Uh, once I, I watched one of the lectures uh, from someone in this spiritual center, and I actually, I, I don't record any dreams for years. I couldn't dream anymore. And ever since I, I saw that, uh, that lecture in this spiritual center, I start to dream twice, three times per night, and I still remember something. And I even remember to have um, been up there studying about history with this. I mean, it could be true, it could not be true. I don't know, but I, it's the awareness that brought to me that's uh, something that I'm going to carry forever. And I know there is a, the law and a cause and effect, so there is a consequence for all our actions. And even our thoughts, why not, right? What we think about others and the energy we put toward others because science has pro been proven that we are all energy. So the energy that I hold in, within me affects my body, my water, and everything else. So I think twice, obviously I'm imperfect, that's why I'm here, but it brings me the awareness that I needed to evolve as a spirit and keep continuing this journey, this life, and the next ones to come. I remember that lecture on dreams by, I think it was Jalma, Jalma Argola. Yes. <laughs> it was very and, good. And also about, there was a 24 hour something, there was a sequeline. I maybe we can put a subtitles eventually, and he said something about, we are working out there when we sleep. Mm -hmm. Our spirits go, that's the reason why, you know, we should sleep at night because we have to go to the rescue. But I mean, that's a deep, it's a deep subject for this group. Mm -hmm. but. That's, I mean, the little seeds that have been planted, you know. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. just going to bring you something to think about, and you're going to yeah. start to pay attention to all the things that are around you, so. Definitely, yeah. Thank you for letting me share. Can I have one more thing, because you reminded me? With, <laughs> just, just real quick, sorry. Sure. Uh, with the crystals, because I have some at home, and I have like a smoky quartz, uh, a necklace, and a couple others. I have a friend of mine who's Wiccan, and uh, I, I realized, like, I don't think of it now as like the the crystals themselves had any power. Everything is in here. Mm -hmm. It's just I, I will still like have them, but it's kind of like for me I use it as a focusing because a lot of times our head is a lot of different things. So if I'm actually focusing and there's a little ritual or whatever it is, it actually it gets me just to like focus on my intent and it goes back to like what my intent is and what I I want. So it almost acts in the same way as if you know you see a psychologist. A lot of the help that's they're just being a mirror for you. The power is not within them, they're just like reflecting it back to you. That's kind of how I look at it now. So I don't even look at it, you know, as, oh, these things don't work, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, you know what, I'm just using this as a symbol to focus my thought, basically. And, and I can still, you know, I still get enjoyment. So I'm just kind of thinking of it like that a little bit. Yes, yeah, because I'm, I'm funny too, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm not really sure if they work or not. And like, I used to like really love them and like I have a big collection and everything. and, and uh, and then it's like for the, for like a while now, I've just like they've been kind of sitting on the shelf collecting dust. And I'm like, <laughs> like I don't know, like you know, I'm not gonna tell anybody else like not to do it, you know. But but they're not hurting you, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like I, I'm like I don't know. I'm kind of funny because I'm like I'm, I'm waiting for science to prove that it actually has some kind of effect. It doesn't sound like me to say something like that. <laughs> do you guys want anything to this topic? I think what I have left um, behind, in my case, it's been rituals, and nice. but mainly rituals that, uh, that I didn't really know why I was doing them. I was just doing them because I was told that it should be done that way or, you know, whatever. Um, and I just kept on repeating things just because. So that, that's probably one of the main things that I've left behind with um, spiritism because now I think why am I doing this and does it make sense uh, what is the sense that it makes a and for the most part then what ends up and ends up happening is that I give up rituals mostly that a wonderful thing happened to me with spiritism though is my when I 
had the uh, exposure to the magnetic healing. And that, you know, it wasn't real to me. It's very real now. In fact, I, uh, I, I experience the, mag the magnetic, uh, where I can actually work on myself with it. So I can, I can bring, it, bring it into my body with my meditation. And it really is a, uh, a, a big plus, a real big plus in my life. Particularly uh, at nine, being 92. <laughs> you're not 92 yet, right? Oh, the October. Yeah. yeah, you're not there yet. I mean, don't. Well, it's, <laughs> it's my 97th <laughs> year. <it's my> <laughs> I was checking you out on Facebook and I was like, we keep calling you 92. I'm like, he's not 92 yet. They gotta give the guy a break, you know? Oh. <laughs> so. You're only 91, not 92. Yeah, that's that's his life that's anyway. True. Let's not even add that. So. <laughs> yeah, I won't add anything because just I see myself in each and every word. I've changed so much. And so I, I'm just gonna take whatever. Stanley said, and I'm sorry, what is her name again? Nick. Nick. Suave I don't know, I look at him and I see <laughs> another name, but anyways, and Priscilla and Juan and yourself, and I did all of the above and so much more that I said, no, I have nothing to add. Yeah, I would like to, though. <laughs> Since you mentioned about rituals, uh, that the other day I went to the church, I, I don't even know which church, because for me it doesn't matter, it's just a place where, you know, Jesus and God are everywhere. So, but I've seen those people standing up, sitting down, standing up. I was like, do they even know what they're doing that for real? It's like, they were taught to do that from the beginning or how to dress up or, I mean, I don't understand. Jesus never said anything about that. So it's like really confusing. I never, I could never relate to that. So in rituals, it's interesting because even an incense or something, I think, if you can use that as a clutch, how do you say? Um, a, a um, clutch. Clutch, like a clutch. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, bonjour, the clutch. I, I forgot the name. Yeah, <laughs> but it, if you can use clutch. that as something to, to uh, uh, help you to bring, you know, to the feeling, to the, that's great. It could be stones, it could be whatever. It could be a gift that you got from someone. So that's mm -hmm. great because the connections is the most important. But I, it's very interesting because the rituals for me, it is the most shocking thing. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, it doesn't like, make sense at all. Like, I'm glad it's pretty it's me. It's doctrine don't have any rituals. It's something that I tell everybody. It's a doctrine. We don't have any ritual. We don't have a person that he has to follow. No, it's like you and your spirit and everybody else. We're in the same boat, so we're the planet, right? So that's, that's for me, is the, the biggest difference. Yeah, it's funny because some of the things, too, like, like what you're saying, they ring. Like I, I was at a, a Buddhist temple one time. They would ring a bell, and you have to bow. And they ring the bell twice, and it was like half bow. It was like I was like, how am I gonna learn all this stuff? You know? <laughs> but like some of the things you do, if you do them like and you mean it, like yeah. like like I had some friends that would say like, oh, I get down on my knees every morning and pray. And it's, it's not like because like that's the only way that you can pray, but it does help you kind of like okay. to humble yourself before God yeah. when, you, when you pray. Yeah. So it's not, a, it's not a bad thing if you really mean it, but if you're just right. doing it because like you're in church and everybody else is doing it and they'll talk about you if you yeah. don't, then you know, <laughs> it's, not gonna, it's not gonna matter. We are in different states of, of understanding, so whatever help us to get in tune with this divine, with our divine, it's welcome, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the next, in the next item, which is the last item in our first section, so we're almost there, right? Um, <laughs> uh, let's, let, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and read it. So, um, the same line of reasoning applies to those who judge spiritism by certain eccentric books that can give them only an incomplete and foolish idea of it. Authentic spiritism is no more responsible for those who understand it badly or who practice it wrongly, then poetry is responsible for those who write bad <laughs> verse. It is deplorable that such works exist, they say, because they compromise the true science. Of course it would be preferable for only good works to be available, but the greater error falls to those who do not go to the trouble to study the subject thoroughly. The same applies to all the arts and sciences. Even the most serious subjects even on the most serious subjects, aren't there treatises that are absurd and packed full of errors? 
Why would spiritism be any more privileged in this respect, especially at its beginning? If those who criticize it would stop judging it by its appearances, they would know what it accepts and what it rejects, and they would not accuse it of what it, of what it itself rejects in the name of reason and experience. So, yeah, when I read that, that got me really thinking. <laughs> you know, like... Um, um, it got me thinking about, like, before I found Spiritism, about a lot of the books that I read. And it's funny, because I, I have a habit of buying books, like, while I'm reading one book, I buy the next book, and I, and I like, have a collection. I have a stack of books, like, waiting for me to read. And, and now I still have, like, in Spiritism, I have that. I have a whole shelf full of books that I'm, like, waiting to read. Um, but before that, I, you know, I was going through my books and cleaning up, and I found, like, a, a few books, people that recommended to me from outside, and I'm just like, I don't want to read this anymore. <laughs> you know, like, like I, I have it, I bought it, and I'm not going to be able to read it because I'm like, I just, I don't, I know I'm not going to like want to like read what it says. <laughs> you know, like it's a message from the Pleiadians. You know, uh, uh, and I'm like, you know, I mean, who knows? It's hard to say. Like, it could be a, a good message. There might be some good yeah. stuff in there, but like, I, I don't want to read anything. Like, I don't want to like waste my time reading something that's not going to be, you know. Uh, come from like an enlightened, elevated spirit, <laughs> you know. Um, um, but what was I going to say about this? Was when I when I read this uh, section, though, it made me kind of think about like what do people outside of Spiritism think when they find the Spiritists? Like, do they think of, that we're just part of the spiritual movement? You know, which seems to me like a lot of people come in here. And when we say spiritist, they go spiritualist, and they, they inter interchange the two words, not knowing that, like, we, we are saying we're different, you know. Um, so, but, but do you think that people put spiritism in the same category as uh, fortune tellers, for instance? You know, like, you know. Yes, they do. Unfortunately, there is a lack of understanding uh, for the basis that they have, most of them are Christian, but they have so many different religions here in America, and it's really, I find hard to explain to them the difference in spiritism and spiritualism, because since it came from France, and even in France, people don't know about it, because they, they had to stop talking about it because of the church. You know, they're being killed <laughs> for talking about it or carrying any book or notes about the subject. So there is a still a very hard, um, how can you say? Like a taboo. Yes, it's, a, it's, it's exactly, it's like a taboo to talk about this sometimes. I feel really hard. And by only with the people that I've been uh, spending a lot of time with, that they understand a little bit of how I see things and then I, I can introduce to them in a different way. And I never say, when I say that I'm going to Spiritual Center, I know, I say I'm going to my study group. Oh, what do you study? We study about Jesus and the teachings. Otherwise, it's like I cannot even explain. And then if I have the chance, I obviously try to tell them, no, I truly believe that there's something else after here, that the divine justice is like, why, why, uh, um, why someone is born with the, you know, with the brain damage, or what, why would Jesus, or God, whatever you want to call, we let someone be born in different conditions, you know, than other people. This is not even fair. If this was the only shot, so it doesn't make sense. So I start to question these people, and that that opened their mind to listen what I have to say. But when I say spiritist, they don't even know what that means. And they relate automatically to a spiritualist, which means, oh, okay, you believe in spirits, great. So well, it's a little bit more than that. Apparently, they talk to us and they teach us some things. So they wrote, they help to write books. <laughs> And that, that's, it's really hard for them. But this is because of the culture that we are in. And uh, hopefully, yeah, but the messengers have been sent. Like uh, uh, this Brian Weiss, he has been opening a lot mm. of doors to spiritism. So every time I mention this guy, the person already heard about it. It's easier for me to say, well, yeah, that's, you know, the reincarnation and the regression, the person. It's easier to explain, but still. Interesting that you're saying that because my experience is completely different. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe because of I've been. Mm, maybe because of the the, the the type of people 
that you know that I uh, that I talk to usually they do not link spiritism with a religion they relink more like to and not spiritualism maybe because of me because I'm so like I'm so like clean I if you go to my house it's that uh, there is absolutely you don't see any sign of, of any kind of, of religion and people that know me they, I usually invite them to be part of my life maybe, maybe because of that and I, they don't see signs of, of uh, religiosity is that how you say it in English yeah, probably. Religio <laughs> religiosity? Religiosidade. I don't know. Religious. Religious related. Religiosidade. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Religious kind of related uh, behavior, habits, or... Religious but, stuff, yeah. yeah but, but no, I, I don't. And actually, because of that, it is easier for me to talk about spiritism. Well, I am a hypnotist, and this is easy to talk about reincarnation with hypnotists because you just hypnotize them and you just tell them whatever you I want. like to <laughs> whatever I want <laughs> you know <laughs> because they work with hypnosis and they all uh, study reincarnation in the in a field of hypnosis there is this obsession which is the spirit release therapy right by uh, first uh, researched by William Baldwin so it's in the science. Whatever I do is in the science. And then if I am talking with uh, uh, the people that I know, I just link. I just link as you did with the Brian Wise. I just link with someone. You know, the obsession is, you know, spiritualism and therapy. And so it's, I link with the science. Whatever we do here, I link with science and yes. people. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe I, I really I find it easy for me these days. These days I have to say in the beginning because I wanted to convince everyone that this <laughs> thing, the spiritism, was the best thing that ever happened to me, and then it was hard to communicate. When I dropped my ego to talk with people from from my own experiences, from my heart, really caring that I don't want, I don't need to impress anyone and I don't need to convince anyone, then it, it became easier to talk and, and that's not, it didn't start too long ago, it was just a few years ago. But in the beginning it was hard to talk about spiritism because I was, I wanted to convince you that what I'm saying is true <laughs> and it was very hard, it was the hardest thing. And then. Now, nowadays, I don't want to convince. I, I just link to make it easier for people to understand. And I even speak, and I, which I love, uh, with atheists, and I really like. I really like to actually easier for me to talk about the spiritism with an atheist than a religious person. <laughs> True. Seriously. Seriously. But still, I can, I can talk with any religious person with no problem. What's that? Brian Weiss said, Many Lives, Many Masters. Yes. That's yeah, an awesome book. Yeah. I read that I haven't even times. read it, but oh, I it's heard awesome. about it's it. Oh, it's awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, it's he amazing. was actually down in South Florida, I think, doing talks, too. Yes. Last year, yes. two years ago. The Mount that's Sinai that's Hospital, he's yeah. the director there. The he used to be. Awesome. He's very old now. I don't know if he's still, yeah, I mean, he's still, he's still working. Yeah. But he'll be yeah, back. Book is for it. Yeah, he'll be back. No, he'll be back. But, I mean, if he's still working in the hospital I don't know no, but, but that's the thing he opened up a, a lot of doors for discussion about it because he being a doctor or mm. whatever you know like doing um, how do you call it? regression and he experienced that being clueless let's say about it or, or agnostic I don't know the words to this express better because I'm not him but he didn't know about that he was confused about it and that brings a little bit of the origin of Spiritism itself. Mm -hmm. Zalan Kardak, he wasn't even a medium. He had no mediumship whatsoever, and he was a scientist, and, and that was a purpose for that, because he was he was trying to get the source of those tables spinning and everything, and uh, he wanted to know which kind of energy was moving those tables. So uh, he, he had to be very 
and uh, use just a scientific way, you know, a scientific eye for those phenomena. So yeah. he could bring a very systematic. We got resources. a lot of help from also from uh, Michael Newton, which is also very famous. Michael Newton, the uh, he created the therapy called Life Between Lives. Mm -hmm. He's a psychologist and. Uh, he created that um, school, Life Between Life, and the other one, what is the other one that is very special? The, the, the William Baldwin, the spiritual release therapy, which is incredible that this obsession is in, in science, it's in a, it's in a clinic uh, hypnosis. This is amazing, amazing. And there are other guys as well uh, studying in neuroscience as well. Oh, yeah, but uh, yeah, got a lot of help these days. Any? We also have crossing over with John Edwards. I don't know. Never heard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know this one. Yeah. So that that was like something because that's kind of what I was what I was sort of mentioning was about. Um, this was a show on TV. I don't think I don't think it's on TV. I don't have, I don't really watch. It's it. not on TV anymore. But no. he would, he had a big studio audience and. Um, he would go, okay, somebody over there, their name starts as J. And somebody would go, my, name, my name's Joan. You know? I'm like, okay, a family member, and uh, her, it's a female family member. Uh, is it my mother? Yeah, it's your mother. You know? <laughs> and it's like, so these are the kind of things that, like, you know, because the people, because he would kind of, like, lead them, like, he would kind of badger his witnesses, and they would kind of, like, give him, like, information, and he would, like, just in, sort of intuitively right, right. go with it, and, like, and then they'd be crying, they'd be like, oh, like, you know, for But there are a lot of good ones. There is a young one that he is, uh, he's, a, uh, he's doing readings with uh, celebrities only. I, I was watching him on video on YouTube, and he's really good. And there is another one, a lady from... Yeah, Long Island. Yeah, she's good, too. She's the medium. I, I, She's good I too. I, I think, unfortunately, though, what the, the the bad ones, quote unquote, are what give the whole thing a bad name. So yeah. what we're talking about here gets lumped in with the whole like yeah. new age movement with spiritual True. that True. type of buzzword that people are like, okay, I didn't know what spiritism was before I talked to Elvira. I, I didn't at all, um, and I just thought it was like spiritualism. I really did, and I just thought it was along with. You know, you have these things that come about the law of attraction that came out in 1908, but all of a sudden it got popular because so and so, you know, made it in mainstream, and so you get you get wrapped up with all that other stuff. So it's really unless you're someone who's really actively trying to seek this out, for the average person, there, you know, I, I don't see how it, you know, I could see easily just getting disregarded as like, oh, okay, this is just right. more of that fluff, right. you know. I see, I see, a, I see something positive about this. It's just the. Uh, that is out there cannot be ignored. I was a few months ago. I was listening to a a podcast. This guy was talking that a survey about uh, asking people if they believe in in life after death or reincarnation. And in this country, is uh, almost eighty percent of the population that participating in the survey believes that is that somehow life goes on. They they don't know but somehow we will come back or we won't we die our spirit won't die. So because of them, although it's of course it's misleading kind of information with that one, that guy that you why why you you were there and trying to figure out the person's information and this is going nowhere right mm -hmm. but it's still it's still when the, I need to bring the movie the Fox sisters from the United States that you started the movement this the spiritualist movement I will bring the movie I have it already it's a, a five minutes documentary but showing how everything started still the the turning tables the the wrapping uh, walls and tables. This is all important. It's, it's an evolution, right? When Kardec started, he started start studying the turning tables. So I think, of course, we don't want to stay there forever. We don't want to be shamans forever, as I usually say, but it is something. I see positive. 
years ago I would say this is misleading this is this but you know what it's it needs to become more uh, familiar like the terminology reincarnation we need because it used to be a taboo right remember the 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 witch which what the people who used to go against the witches and burn the, the burn witches yeah. and uh, this is very recent still you know I, I think you're right you know even with with someone who's not even if they're just they're con artists or whatever they are I don't think everybody I think it's it's also kind of egotistical because I'm like all right we're reading a lot we're studying like I feel like you know you're not this is the truth you know that but if this is doing something for people even if it's not the truth uh, it's it's kind of sparking their emotions and it's sparking them to maybe believe that there is possibly something going on so whether he's giving truth or not it's kind of irrelevant if he's bringing them into the point where they're like okay you know what maybe there's something and then they go and find something else that leads them further so I guess in that sense you know everyone plays a part yeah, but it, it is egotistical. To say, okay, well, you're not what you're saying is wrong. I know because blah blah blah. That's my, you know, I'm argumentative by nature, yeah. so I tend to do that. But I can also now see, like, you know, what? Hey, if that's bringing yeah. people into waking being more up. open, waking up, yeah, yeah. Th then who's, you know, that's an important part as well. Yeah, right? no, I think some uh, groups that are bringing a lot of, uh, again, I like to use the word open doors to spiritism, are yoga groups. Mm. and all these holistic uh, medicines and treatments because there is something and then science is very close to proof I've, I've been watching um, um, it was a seminar or a congress or something that happened in New York a few years ago every year happens but I, this is specific they were trying to prove that there is a spirit and they put those cameras very sensitive to light like they used to find galaxies very far away and they put in a very dark room and they lock the whole room to make sure that no light's gonna get in. They turn on the camera and they randomly use the computer to call the name of the spirits that they obviously previously they they agree with the spirits and the mediums, you know, about the name of the spirits. And they notice that every time the machine was calling that certain spirit, the the light was constantly the same for that spirit and different for every spirit because they have different energy. But then again, the science doesn't accept that as a, you know, as a, let's say, fair formal. experience. It's not mm -hmm. formal. Uh, Basara Moto proving that the words that we put it out, the energy mm -hmm. we put it out to the water, it changes completely the form of the, the molecular of the water. And again, even though he uses a very co consistent uh, methodology, science doesn't accept. So the evidences are there. There is an Indian guy, he has been studying more than 3,000, well, by now, those 3,000 people, like, years ago. By now, it must be, like, 5,000 people. That he has proven that that kid had a previous life. Most of them are in India, but all over Europe. Most of them are in India. And they go to the city, the, you know, a small town, and they prove that the person lived there. She knows details from the house that she never seen in this life. So the evidences are out there. And there the was one the boy that was the that the killer was charged. Did you read that? It was all over the news. It was in Syria. The boy in Syria. Yeah. Did you see that? I saw it on Facebook one day. So, yeah, exactly. He it, had a, he had the same wound. The, on his the head. mark right here, and then he said, "Oh, I was born in another village. It was three years old." So they went to another village, and he said that when the body was buried, and they went there, they found the schools. And there was a mark in the schools right here. And then he saw the man, he said, I was your neighbor and you killed me. So the first they asked, where was this guy, the name that he gave? And the people in the village said that the guy disappeared four years earlier. And then he said that where the body was, what well, the body, the, the skeleton. And, uh, and then he found a guy when he said, I was your neighbor and you, you killed me. And you killed me, blah, blah, blah. The guy was in his face and he admitted and he was charged. Yeah, well, some, the thing is, he was people, charged. People like that, they go to the TV and say those things and stories like that, are always going to divide. Either you're going to believe it or not. Yeah. And then you're going to always have the discussion, yeah. you know, especially on Facebook. <laughs> I was going to have the discussion towards that and nobody's going to get it. It's just good. I think it even talks in the Spirits book. It talks about a lot of stuff I've read, but 
Like, if we were all to see a manifestation here right now, I think we would all accept it as being real. But other people might not. Even though I see it right in front of my face, you could call this scientific proof. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out a way to rationalize it and, and say that, you know, it was something else. It was blah, blah, blah. Because if I'm not willing to accept what I'm seeing, True. it doesn't matter all the proof in the world, all the evidence, because people are going to just refute it. And in their minds, they're going to say, ah, oh, you know, it was something else or it wasn't. And I think about that in, like, say, the, the times of Jesus performing the miracles. He might have done that. You might have seen, like, all these things happen right in front of your face, but then if people aren't willing to accept that, yeah. they're not going to. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So you can't, yeah. you know, it's kind of like when the student's ready, the teacher's going to appear type of thing. But we learn in spiritism that there are different levels of spirits. And we obviously can see because someone is so evil. How can someone, you know, beat the kid until, he, he, I mean, it's, we can see the difference of the spirits it's very clear and uh, when you start to see from the outside and uh, you're right i mean that you learn also in spirit is not to judge these people because mm -hmm. they are different levels they're not ready to accept or they have you know the, their spirit has some relatives or whatever so it is but that it's that's why again the spirit brings the questions it gives you the answers if you look for it but I like to give the question. I like to leave the person with the question. So I question them all these things. Do you really think that's a lie? I mean, it, it, and then I, I, I make them think about it and I don't answer. Mm -hmm. I leave the question mark. Is that what's going to lead them to try to find the answer eventually? Or if they're not ready, then don't. Well, that's Bobby good because you're also not making. They're also not going to be on guard then. Because if exactly. you're trying to tell them something, they're automatically might be like, "Okay, well, no, no." But if you're just asking a question, there's nothing. Exactly, there's nothing but I always I have to use for Americans because being Brazilian, it's easy for me to speak in Portuguese. We have mm -hmm. so many examples in Brazil. It's so easy for us to talk about it, even if the person doesn't accept. In Spanish, also, it's easier for me to explain. But in English, especially specifically, uh, it's hard to. It, it tried to explain something without using science as a reference. Everything you have to use as a reference is science. And I really, I particularly like that. That's the reason I'm here today. I, I think that I need the proofs, not the, for myself, because I already understand. I just need to put the puzzles, you know, I need, I need to finish the puzzle. And science is the puzzle, because it's doctrine is a it. triangle. It's good to have a, a confirmation of a, 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 a yeah. solid... It's good to... Yeah, but I mean, it's like, it's beautiful to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We see, even Jesus is seeing a difference, uh, uh, in different points of view for the same in Catholics. Uh, there's so different, many different churches, that are, or Christians in general. Mm -hmm. You have uh, uh, Jehovah Witness, they even, even call Jesus, Jesus. So, you know, there you go. I mean, there's so many distorts. Uh, it's, it's all distorts right now. The conciles changed so many things. The reincarnation wasn't the good. Bible. It wasn't the Bible until the 1500s, whatever. Oh no, 900s, I think. Anyway, it was there. So it's... Um, my point is that spiritism is a science, first of all. And based on the science, or the questions maybe, philosophy, by questioning the phenomena Proving them, it comes the religion. So for me, spiritism, the base starts from science and philosophy, and the point in the top is the religion. We need to start from the base. Mm -hmm. And we see people trying to use, because you can be a Catholic, you can be even a Jew, and you can be spiritist at the same time. Spiritism is just, it brings, it, you're going to confront a lot of ideas, obviously. You know, we believe in reincarnation. Well, for us, it's not even a belief, it's a fact. So, that will confront with all the religions, but that you can be both, and then you're gonna find the answers that you don't find in religions. You might find in the spirit. I I just don't like how how people seem to not all the time, but a lot of times use science as an absolute truth, which clearly it's not because they used to think yeah. the world was flat that that Very we were the sun. So it's always changing. So just by by reason of that. Science is, is no bottom line. If anything, it's the opposite. Because if we're getting information from beyond, there's going to be a higher perspective than what yeah. we consider science now. Yeah. So why do we base everything that we're seeing and perceiving right. on something that's already proven itself to be infantile right. in comparison? Right. That's, what, that's, that's the issue right. I have with, with always documenting science as... Well, science, well, it's still, right. science but is still changing. Again, but so science even... is still evolving, that's the Exa thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It evolves, evolves as we evolve, as it says when we are studying the gospel according to spiritism. 
the science that brings, uh, that evolves, uh, we, we weren't ready yet to understand all these things when Jesus came. Mm -hmm. And all the other messengers, right, Buddha came even before. We weren't ready to accept those things. But now science has been bringing all these puzzles, these pieces that are missing. And that's where I think this the connection and, and the connection is coming uh, we, we have to be really wise to share this information because some people like the Golden TV, they can be seen as people just, just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I agree. So it's, I see that too. The, 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 the responsibility is. that comes with that, with that idea, with all those questions. It comes with the, this awakening, the, this, awakening. The, the awareness of this free will brings us this responsibility that we shall not be the same or do the same thing as we used to. And go back to your first question. Mm -hmm. Because with that knowledge, now what? Now what we do? We have the moral consequences of spirit. Exactly. That, you know, and, and Carter, I don't know if he says it in this chapter, but I read it and it was like, he says like the, the providential aim of spiritism is to show people that there's, you know, a life after death, basically. <laughs> it's like, right. you know, it's like if you get one thing out of spiritism, or, you know, it's the, the idea that life goes on, and, yeah. and that, you know, that we don't only live once, like people like to say. I saw another uh, uh, bumper sticker that said, YOLO, and I was like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> like, no, it's not true. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a terrible thing to say, but I just don't like saying it. I felt like, I don't know I'm like saying it just now, but then uh, it's also not true. <laughs> it's a ter it's a, and and the, the fact that people keep saying it, uh -huh. and like, like it's, it, you know, they don't know like how detrimental that is to, to society. Mm. Like, oh, I'm, it's, you know, I'm self-made, you know, I'm gonna, I only live once, I'm going to take what's mine, and, you know. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna get it for me, and you know, look out for numero uno, and <laughs> take it, take it to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you. Um, Since you know a lot about Buddhism, because you were before that, and you always had this spiritualist. I went to a Buddhist temple one time. Oh, once. Okay. <laughs> I thought you had. A anyway, what? As an American, because it's easy for me as a Brazilian to say that was, as I said, I've grown up in this environment, but. You uh, have been in the spirit for over a year now, almost two years. Why, why did you stay, and, and what do you think is the most valuable thing that you should think you, Americans, I mean, I mean Americans because we are in America, they should know about it, and the, what was the big contrast? What the you reason found I understand? stayed at this spirit center was the foundation. <laughs> yeah, we are great, and the food is good, but... <laughs> <laughs> But what, what I mean, when you say <laughs> being an American, what would you like really? to say about the spirit? Cheese food? bread. It's really Cheese good. Cheese bread. Yeah. Follow your kids. Follow your kids. I believe you. As Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so be a yeah. cheese bread. <laughs> I believe you. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> say. I mean, that's, I mean, cause we're, we kind of got off topic today. It's okay. Um, it's all right. Um, <laughs> it's alright, but <laughs> I, just, I don't know if to come back to the topic, uh, but to come back well, to what we read there, um, it, I agree with what you're saying that you know we can use science to talk to other people, but what Kardec said 150 years ago it still holds true unless the person <coughs> wants to go through the trouble of studying and <clears throat> going deep into um, what things mean, there's nothing to do. Uh, and then when the person does go to the trouble of uh, looking deeper into things, then, then we can use all those tools and, uh, you know, we can lean on science and, uh, and so on. But still, I think you mentioned something like that. Uh, People don't want to believe they want yeah. anyway, and mm -hmm. if they don't want to take the trouble of uh, you know asking questions and looking for the answers, True. and science or God Himself can you know, come here. And I mean, is it oh, just not a goal to spread spiritism? I don't think it is. 
No. no. Our, no. our goal is to unveil this, that there is continuation after death. Our goal is well, to... Not, but religion is not saying that all along. Well, but how is it, is it saying though? Because uh, people I mean, are... Heaven and hell, you know. It's still the same. But what, are we creating the heaven and hell as we like? Or we are do, running a research on that to realize what what is really heaven and hell? Yeah, I'm not being a devil's advocate. No, no, it's okay. And you can be, and you can be I like it. Uh, if you want to be, but, it's okay. But the thing it's is, totally uh, maybe we don't... Our, our goal is not to convince people. Absolutely but not. In fact, my daughter, I was talking to her on the phone yesterday, and uh, I was telling her how much I enjoy being with the uh, and studying spiritism. I'm learning so much. And she says, she says well, what is it about? I said, you know, about uh, what happens after you die. So she says to me, I said, I said this is wonderful. You know, it, it talks about what happens after you die. So she says, well, what happens after you die? I said, I said well, why don't you die and find out? <laughs> Come back to tell me, because the wind's going. <laughs> uh, Stanley. I had a similar conversation with my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is... Hey, well, I, but I love my daughter. <laughs> yeah. What did you just say, Steve? We are going to different groups. That's what you told her? Yeah. Your wife. Oh, no, yeah. I'm, just, I'm not even divorced yet. <laughs> we are going to different groups after <laughs> this. But, yeah. So enjoy I hope you enjoy Planet Earth again for the next. You know, <laughs> I'm not kidding. They might be sent to another one. I don't know. <laughs> uh, now my wife is a saint. I'm just kidding. I wanted to touch on some uh, since you said the um, responsibility. I think that's kind of like the cornerstone of everything here, because searching, um, studying this. You know, understanding our responsibility, I think, is something a lot of people don't want to do. Um, we have been kind of socially conditioned with the politicization of religions to... Um, or not even, allowed to think, right? Right. Even though they say we have free will, you're doing something so you don't get punished. Or, you know, you do something wrong, you blame it on the devil. You're really not taking responsibility right. for your life. Right, right. So, accepting this, and it's not just about spreading this, it's about taking this knowledge and applying it, because faith without right. works is dead. Right. I can say this to, to the masses until I'm blue in the face, but I think it's more about me personally taking this and living my life, and then, you know, sh you show others through actions, not through just telling them. So, understanding what happens after we die affects how I'm going to look at my life now. Exactly. And I'm not going to have a case of like, oh, well, what's the use? I'm going to die anyway. You know what? Well, let's just live for... Mm -hmm. No, because the problems that we have now, we have to solve eventually. That, and that, that, to me, has been a big help. If I don't solve this challenge in this life, I'm going to have to do it eventually anyway, so let's just, let's just do it. And that's completely changed my outlook on how I, how I deal with things that's in life. Exactly. Yeah, and that, to me, is, is the... Yeah, that, that's why it's important. Um, because it's not about, I mean, it's about what happens, but what happens impacts what we do here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand that, um, I mean, I've been a spiritualist for, well, as long as you people are alive, you know. <laughs> but, and then, but I just came to spiritism, and it's, it was like, uh, like every spiritist is certainly a spiritualist. Right. But not every spiritualist is a spiritist. Exactly. So to me, I, it, this is just mm -hmm. added it on for me. You know? Right. I've mm -hmm. been. Uh, right, right. Mm. And I guess it goes like. I've been channeling my own spirit for so many years now. You know, and it's part, part of my life, and it's a, uh, and it's wonderful. And my, <laughs> my wizard, the guy that's inside of me, is definitely not who Stanley is. You know, my personality is certainly different than my spirit. And, and, mm. and, so I've, I've been working with this and mm -hmm. trying to explain this and with, with what I've been doing all these years. But spiritism is a step up for me from my spiritualism. Thanks for sharing. You know, I talk to a lot of people, I know we got to wrap up, but a lot of people I talk to will raise objections to spiritism. Just when I mention something casually, like, you know, something about it, and they have some objection, like they always just want to raise some kind of objection. What about this? What about that? You know, but... It's like when I kind of take a step back and I'm like, well, you know, like, like what, what our goal really is, one of our goals is to like live according to divine laws. 
And so if you like take a look at like what we're doing and where we're going, like tell me the downside of practicing charity. You know, tell me the yeah. the, the downside of, <laughs> of of learning how to love people, of, right. of like valuing other people, you know. And yeah. and when when we talked about, you know, people say you only live once, where's where's the like what's the uh, the benefit of like helping somebody if you if you're a materialist if you believe that like this is my only life and I gotta do like the best I can while I'm here like right. where's the where's the benefit in helping exactly. other people and and we know that like charity is um, one of the divine laws you know I was reading the gospel last night I'm I'm starting to study it and they talk about like how much I don't know how you say like how much of a high you get from helping other people. Yeah, I'm really paraphrasing that. <laughs> but, but you know, to say like uh, when I do something good for somebody else, I think I'm I think I'm doing it for them, and in reality, is I'm doing it for myself. I mean, I'm not saying for me because I, I have to start doing that. But you know, in the future, if I do start, you know, but that's that's what they're talking about is is um, is learning to practice charity. Um, so, of course, we went over our time, but. Um, <laughs> um, that we basically covered item five and six today, and we finished the first section of chapter two. Yes. So next week we're going to start again with item seven, which is under concerning spirits. Um, and if anybody needs the reading, if they don't have the book, um, we have the reading available as a PDF. You can contact me or, or Cynthia or our WhatsApp group. You always put the it's in your you just click on it. Yeah, you can click on it. You can download it from our Google Drive, so we, yeah. it's available. And if anybody on Facebook needs it, you just contact either Steve or Cynthia or, or somebody here. We'll get make sure you get it. And um, I don't know if we have any announcements. We um, might we might have a good lecture tomorrow. Or we might have a great lecture tomorrow. So <laughs> is it continuing on the uh, on the book? Next what? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is it still the it's, or no, it's different? It's supposed to be. Um, Antonio Vejera about oh, um, he's great. he does great he's lectures great. on the on yeah, the world laws. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, we might have a special guest from Brazil. I haven't heard anything. Oh uh, no, uh, gonna he happen. went back to Brazil mm -hmm. earlier. But we're gonna have uh, someone from Brazil. He's a physician and uh, his PhD is in quantum physics, and he's a spiritist. He will be here in September, and he will be presenting things to us, and it's like. It, amazing. It's really a great researcher yeah. and uh, yeah. so, talking, sure miss talking that. about science. Yeah. That we were today, that, yes. that's going to be an opportunity. So the link from, from between a scientist. spirituality right. and science, meeting in the spiritism, this guy will come from Brazil in September and I guess he will be here with us doing all, all sort of things, like different things, and we will we'll be announcing it. No, on our Wednesdays meetings. All right, so I'm gonna okay. go, go ahead and shut down our Facebook broadcast. So if anybody's on Facebook, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right.